this piece of art that the artist may have spent years writing and creating and recording and producing, to be able to be sort of a critical part in this chain of delivering this thing. And then they hand it to you and say, all right, it's up to you to do this right, to deliver it to the world. It's a huge responsibility. It's a huge privilege. We all feel very fortunate, every one of us, that we, you know, that's what we get to do every day. When you walk in there to know that they did the, the first Beatles records on BJ, all the Motown records, the Elvis, just the feel of that place alone. And since they've been doing it consistently for so long, they know what they're doing. They have that history and all that experience that some of the other companies don't quite have. Well, United Record Pressing is kind of a, a unique company in the music industry and the vinyl record manufacturing industry too. On the one hand, we have this wonderful history the company was founded in 1949. We're the second oldest manufacturer of vinyl records in North America. Manufactured in this historic building and on Chestnut Street from 1962 and, until the end of last year and, and now in, into its new facility. It, it pressed the majority of the Motown records uh, in the 60s and the 70s. It pressed the first uh, Beatles single in America. It, there's a litany of just really, really important music that, that the company has pressed. The State of United uh, Record Pressing, when I first acquired, was this company with a wonderful history located in this beautiful, important building in, in Nashville, Tennessee, but in an in industry that was still in decline. At that time, vinyl records were primarily manufactured for the distribution of 12-inch singles to club DJs around the world. That was a practice that was sort of slowly dying. They were all promotional records, and so the record companies were giving away tens of thousands of records to DJs. And at the time, in, in 07, 08, record companies were not in a strong financial position, and they sort of recognized that giving away free records is probably not the best way to preserve our financial viability. And we really understood what the business strategy of the company at the time and the way it had operationally built itself. There was a disconnect between where it was and where it needed to go. As you saw kind of the flicker of commercial vinyl and important records being released on vinyl, you recognized that we needed to do some things differently to, to really change how the, uh, how the company delivered its product to the world. United was very focused on making a lot of records fast. Quality wasn't the highest priority. My emotional connection to music, uh, as well as just my orientation to life in general, is I really care about quality. And certainly I care about quality if I'm going to listen to a record and, and understanding what's gone into it. And if I'm going to play a part in delivering that, it's got to be good. We ended up really giving the company a complete operational overhaul and really turning everything upside down and, and trying to understand what is it we're doing today, what is it we can do differently to, to make a higher quality record. And we really reinvented the company operationally. From the kind of vinyl compound we sourced to the brightness of the lights above the inspectors so that we could better reveal flaws, different capital equipment, different technical processes. So right now we're standing in our mechanical room and this is really the engine that powers the plant that lets our presses run and lets us make records. And you have a couple of different processes. Uh, the first is you, you need to bring heat to the presses. 
steam heat so you can melt the vinyl compound and get it soft enough to make a record. And to do that, we have our two boilers here that are producing steam heat, feeding it to the boilers, to the extruders, to the dies that allow us to mold the records and make that. So they're delivering steam heat uh, down to the presses and, 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 and making soft vinyl to make records. When you make that heated up vinyl and you press it into a record, eventually you have to cool it off so that, that the, when the press releases, the record will keep its form and, and release. And the way you do that is with water. It's a, it's a closed loop system, and, and it's, it's essential to make the record. Having gone through a few years of transition and reinvention, 08, 09, 2010 timeframe, left us in a position of, of being much stronger, a much higher quality producer, a much more reliable producer than, than we were when I bought the company. It's so manual through the whole time that just in the vinyl manufacturing alone, you'll probably have a good 20 people, probably easy, that touch, physically touch your vinyl until it hits the shelves. And that's just the manufacturing side. It's not even the recording side of things and the distribution side of things and the label side of things. And I really think it is amazing. We employ 150 people, and so there's an enormous number of steps, and you're doing it on, on assets and with processes that have been around for a long, long time. I get it. The artist, there's always an element of trust that is going to be involved, uh, especially when you're trying to combine the great forces of art and commerce together. When you go tour that facility at United, it's, it's immediately apparent how much these people care about music. I mean, just the quality control. This dude is, is sitting in this room listening to every sixth record that gets pressed on the machine to make sure that it's right. At some point, you probably spend some amount of time like wondering if what you're doing is like worth being put on something. And so to be able to sit there and hold it in your hands and, and you know, see that, that, you know, somebody felt like it was is a pretty humbling experience, to say the least. For a long time, we were rationing our output, and for a long time, we couldn't accept new customers. It, it was a position where we were disappointing a lot of people. We were disappointing our, our, our major label customers because they couldn't get what they needed. essentially had to shut the door to kind of smaller independent artists because we were just too afraid that all we were going to do is disappoint them. We had wait times were, you know, nine months to a year, and that, that's crazy. In an age where people are used to sort of, you know, kind of immediate gratification and to tell them they can't have their record for nine months to a year is, is just, it's an awful place to be. If we wanted to continue to be the kind of important partner to our customers that we had been and that we wanted to continue to be, we needed to operate in a, in a new facility. I, the, you know, the, the whole plant was an empty box. So it used to just be a warehouse. There was nothing in it. And so as you walk through the plant, you see the trenches cut in the floor. You see all the overhead supports to, to support the steam and the water. All the trenches are to support the water lines, cold water and hot water. All of that had to be engineered, designed, built, and installed. Uh, similarly, this was an open courtyard. There was no roof, there was no nothing. And so again, we had to design that to accommodate two large boilers, to accommodate the water circulation, uh, to, com uh, to accommodate the compressed air that you need to, to manage the pneumatics, to grab record labels and all that. So completely from scratch, uh, a clean palette, and today we have this. It's an expansion that sort of when fully executed should allow us to grow our capacity by a factor of about two and a half. We should have the ability to, to make close to 100,000 records a day eventually. And that's an awful lot of records. People visit our plant and see what we're setting out to do and they've, they've reflected on the large plants that were owned by the major labels in the 60s and the 70s, and they've, we've heard stories of the scale of what these things were and how they were.
can see the, the light in their eyes as they, they remember those plants and they see that, well, here's another one come, evolving. As I was sort of searching for this company that I felt I would have a connection to and a, a passion for, I was looking at businesses all over the country and, and looking for sort of a niche business where I felt my involvement in it, my investment in it could make a difference. And in this process, I came across United Record Pressing located in Nashville, Tennessee. I, I don't think I'd ever been to Nashville prior to, to meeting United Record Pressing. Immediately came down and, and experienced this building and, and the, 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 the process of making records and, and, and just saw what was here and, and fell in love with the business. But. In the process, I, I, I've, I've really come to, to love Tennessee. I love Nashville. I think there's definitely a synergy in the music economy and the musical environment in Nashville. You have producers, you have engineers, you certainly have artists, you have session musicians. You have Bonnaroo that takes place every summer that draws you know, you know, artists from all over the world and they all come through Nashville on their way to Bonnaroo. Oh, I'm working at big machine label group and we're in just houses on music row all working together and I feel that really sums up the energy and the mentality of Nashville of it is big business but it's still important and the personal relationships matter and the, the sense of community is very important to Nashville. I've been coming to Tennessee since I was 18 years old to make music. This is such a special place in the United States. It's such a special place in the American South. When you examine it from Mountain City to Memphis, um, I can't think of a, of a US state that has more musical significance than ours. The many branches of the tree of American popular music, practically every branch draws some sort of, uh, some sort of tap water from our state. So being here and being, uh, like Pete Seeger says, a link in the chain. It's really exciting to be able to add on to the very essence of American popular music. This is the place where it, where it happened. But I think that Tennessee is the heart and soul of American popular music. One of the really great things that we did in terms of just emotionally great things is we started a recording series, recording up here in the Motown suite above United Record Pressing. The Motown Suite was built when this building was built, and it was built with a particular purpose in mind. At the time, United was doing a lot of work pressing the records for Motown, being that it was located in Nashville in the segregated South. A lot of the Motown artists and executives were precluded from getting hotel rooms. They wanted to come down, they wanted to see their records made, they wanted to be able to celebrate the release of their records. So when this plant was built, it was built specifically to be able to accommodate and support those artists. We're here in, in the, the Motown suite in the record release room. One of the things that we've done here is that it was really one of the emotionally most satisfying, energizing things is we, we invited artists to come up here and record. And we worked with a local sound engineer who, who records on, you know, only on analog tape and you know, quarter inch two track tape. And, and we put all the musicians in the room and, and they could configure it in whatever way they wanted to. And, and they, they would record songs and we would record maybe 20, 25 minutes of music. Uh, we'd record a track and, and uh, they'd listen to it. And if they liked it, they'd say, good. And then you go on. If not, they'd rewind the tape and record over it. So there was no edits, no overdubs. It was a very kind of real, you're, you're, you're out there skating on the ice and, and you're going to get what you're going to get. Some artists could do it in four hours and some would take 14 or more and some would do it with a cup of coffee and some would do it with a case of wine. But we, we really created some really, really beautiful records in the process. The space is all intact. We have the brown paneling. We have the nicotine stains on the ceiling. We have the Naga hide furniture. We have turntables from the 60s and the 70s. It doesn't take a lot of imagination to speculate what went on here, and, and it undoubtedly was great. The record keeping of, of who's been here is, is a little sparse, but it's a roster of, of, of every great Motown artist you, you'd want to imagine. Every artist that came in, they just said all of this space just spoke to them with, with an incredible energy and the history and, and you know, the engineers said the sonic qualities of this room. You know, this was a room that was primarily 
meant to just have a party so artists could celebrate their art, their, the release of their records. And there was one artist in particular, a, 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 an artist named Corey Chisel. Corey was really excited about it, and he was thinking about what he was going to record, and it was going to be a combination of original songs and some, some really beautiful covers. And they hadn't been able to finish it, so it, it, it was a song without an ending. And he kind of showed up early, and, and, and he said, everybody just hold for a while. And Adriel, come on. And they, they went in the, in the back room back. About 90 minutes later, they came out and they said, we got it. We got it. And they completed the song. And it's a gorgeous song. And, and we recorded it on the record, put it on the tape. And, and they just, it had this amazing, amazing power to it. And he said, you know, that day was one of the most memorable, powerful days in, in, you know, in, in, in his you know, professional career. Their energy is in these walls, and we feel so lucky that nobody ever did anything to disturb this because it's all exactly as it is, including the uh, copies of Billboard magazine from you know, 1971. It's all here, and, and um, you know, we're not going to touch it. Here you have the. Uh... You know, the, the newspaper clipping of the, the opening of the plant in 1962. And then ups and down years for records and Motown's magic tuned in. 50 years of 45s. The earlier history of the company, they only made 45s. United acquired Dixie Record Pressing and Dixie made 12 inch records. And so with the acquisition of Dick, Dixie came 12 inch records. And now that's, that's the predominant format that we press. We still make 45s, but not nearly as many as, the, as we do of the 12-inch records. Music has always been really important to me. Again, growing up in the 70s, my, my mother was passionate about music. At an illegally young age, she would take me to blues bars, and, and we would see uh, Muddy Waters and Sun Seals and Corky Siegel and Duke Tomato. And uh, I can remember at you know, age 13, 14, uh, seeing this music and just it just spoke to me. I mean, everybody in the 70s loved music, but for me, it just, it, it struck a deeper chord. It was really, really in my soul. And uh, it had always been that way. Miles Davis' Kind of Blue is my all-time favorite record. It, uh, to me, it just, th there is no more beautiful music. I, I, I like all kinds of music. I love blues, I like rock, and you know, indie, uh, but, but that particular jazz record to me is just perfect. And the fact that we got to press that in our darkest days. <laughs> that, that, that was a sign, right? And I like music in all formats, and I, I stream music, and I, I, I you know, listen to CDs and all that, but can have a, a, a beautiful piece of cover art, and you have liner notes, and, and you can drop a needle in a groove and hear music really come to life and hear the depth and, and kind of the, the, the story within the music. It, it just, it's the ultimate way to consume music. And, and it leaves an impression on you that's different than if you just listen to the same music on your phone. You remember it. It stays with you in a deeper way. You know, you used to have these amazing music writers, and you'd look forward to reading the liner notes because, like, they would have insight to the record. Could oftentimes give you, like, a starting point to listen to the record, you know? Give you an idea of, like, how to approach it and stuff. For me, I really like being in the presence of seeing, the, you know, the needle, you know, dance on the grooves. And there's something that happens to be able to have this very physical act occurring simultaneously with this real magic of hearing recorded sound. When Edison came up with the, the wax cylinder, the precursor of, of vinyl, he was really amazed by this discovery. And he knew right away that what he had come up with was going to be something really vital for the, for the world. And that same technology that uh, Edison figures out in some time in the latter third of the 19th century, it's the very same thing we're doing now. It hasn't changed. Undoubtedly, there are challenges if it facing the music industry today. At the same time, labels, artists, everybody recognizes that physical product, and in particular vinyl, has an important place in, in its economic ecosystem, too. 
they are embracing it and, and consumers continue to embrace it. Vinyl continues to grow. I think Nielsen just released its, its third quarter report this morning and, and you know, vinyl is the only physical category that, that showed growth and it continues to do that. We believe the future for United is bright. We think we're doing the right things. The investments we're making and the way that we're approaching our craft here is somewhat unique in this industry. We're trying to bring and marry a, a desire to invest, a sophistication in terms of how we, we look at our business, manage our business, how we invest in our people and our processes and our systems to, to be a best practices manufacturer at the same time to continue to celebrate our heritage and our history. There aren't many companies that can say we, we've been doing something since 1949. We want to be the preeminent pressing partner to our partners to our customers. We want to make great records.